Here's more wrestling news for August 16th, 2022. And we're starting off this afternoon with news from GCW Homecoming. As night one saw John Moxley defend the GCW World Championship against Effie, but after retaining the title, the champ's night was far from over. Immediately after the match, Moxley got on the microphone and demanded real competition, which saw the arrival of Nick Gage, who claimed he has unfinished business with the GCW World Champ. Gage laid out the challenge for a GCW World title match in the future, and while Moxley would agree, he raised the stakes, saying that Gage would have to put his career on the line to get a shot at the gold. Gage has mentioned that his career might be coming to an end in his promo interrupting Moxley, and the GCW World Champion hopes to be the one to end it. No date was confirmed for the title versus career match, but the stakes could not be higher for when these two eventually face off. When Bobby Lashley returned to WWE in 2018, he did so after establishing himself not just in wrestling, but in the world of MMA. Lashley boasts an impressive 15-2 record in MMA, where he mostly worked as part of Strikeforce and Bellator, but has never stepped foot in the octagon for UFC. While speaking to Sean Ross Sapp, Bobby Lashley revealed that Vince McMahon recently shut him down when it came to fighting for UFC, saying, It's still in me. I saw the last UFC event where Vince and Stephanie were sitting ringside. I was in the stands and texting Vince, can I get in there? And he was like, ah. When Lashley returned to WWE, Bellator officials confirmed that he was still under contract, but it's now been nearly six years since his last fight. Perhaps with WWE's recent change of management, Lashley will finally get the return to the octagon he's hoping for, something that would never happen if Vince McMahon were still running WWE. Yesterday, we reported on Arya Davari, who has signed a full-time deal with AEW. Davari has had some matches with the company, but his real skills are being utilized behind the scenes, as he's also working as a producer for the company. Prior to AEW, Davari had been doing producer work for WWE and had even been producing WWE main event shows on his own before his abrupt departure just a few months ago. Fightful Select reports that Davari had impressed a lot of the right names behind the scenes in WWE and was even expected to sign a full-time promotion with WWE, which would have seen him return after being released in June 2021. The report added that WWE has doubled up on producer assignments, as opposed to the model that saw producers receive one assignment per show, and several segments, which once had two producers, are now worked solo. In addition to producing, Davari has been working on screen as the leader of the Trust Busters with Slim J, fellow WWE alum Parker Boudreaux, and most recently, Sonny Kiss, but that never would have happened had he signed to return with WWE earlier this year. When AJ Styles debuted in WWE at the 2016 Royal Rumble, fans were rightly shocked as there had been no hints that he was ever going to join the company. Throughout his six and a half years with WWE, Styles has used the same theme, understandably called Phenomenal, but this wasn't originally planned for the two-time former WWE World Champion. In an interview with Inside the Ropes, Styles explained that the theme was made for a different former TNA World Champion, the Cowboy James Storm. Storm made a handful of appearances for WWE as part of NXT in 2015, but ultimately opted not to sign with WWE, instead returning to Impact Wrestling. Styles explained that when asked about a WWE entrance theme, he explained to CFO Dollar Sign what he wanted, and it just so happened that the theme for the Cowboy fit his requests exactly. While superstars often change their themes, Styles has kept the same song, so as long as that organ hits, fans know they're in store for a great match. When Ronda Rousey returned to WWE this year, she did so as a babyface, but now the former SmackDown Women's Champion is working as a heel. At a recent WWE Live event, Rousey showed that she has fully embraced being a heel, and it wasn't by her actions in the ring. At the event, a fan tried to get a picture with Rousey, and when the former UFC fighter spotted this, she quickly grabbed the phone herself. Rousey did use the fan's phone to get a selfie, but it wasn't with the phone's owner, as she instead took pictures with other fans before returning the device. All of this was captured and shared online, and in a tweet, Rousey made it clear that she enjoyed being bad. We'll have to wait and see what's in store for Rousey, as while well, she's not booked for Clash of the Castle, don't be surprised if the baddest woman on the planet makes her presence known regardless. Rousey has so far been unable to take the SmackDown Women's Championship away from Liv Morgan, who captured the title by cashing in Money in the Bank in July. As the SmackDown Women's Champion, Morgan is regularly featured on WWE programming and promotional materials, and she may soon be debuting a brand new look. 
On Sunday night, Morgan shared a photoshopped image of herself sporting bangs and dark hair in a much different look for the champ. When Fiona Nova, the host of G4 TV and an avid WWE fan, voiced her approval for the change, Morgan told them to stay tuned, implying that the change is coming. If so, it wouldn't be the first time Morgan has changed her look, as she debuted as a blonde in NXT in 2015 and switched to pink hair for most of her run in the Riot Squad. Right now, though, the only thing about her appearance Morgan should be focusing on is keeping her SmackDown Women's Championship, a reign that Shayna Baszler hopes to end next month in Cardiff. More producer news now as Jason Jordan has been working backstage for years ever since an injury ended his in-ring career. The former Raw, SmackDown, and NXT Tag Team Champion has done a lot of WWE behind the scenes, but hasn't exactly been appreciated for his efforts. That's according to a report by Fightful, who said that Jordan was being rarely credited for producing TV segments earlier this year, despite putting a ton of work into them. Thankfully, that has changed, and Jordan is being credited more and more for his contribution in recent months. While Jordan had a budding wrestling career and his work as Kurt Angle's son was definitely going somewhere, his time in the ring was cut short, and WWE, at the very least, can credit him for the work he still does. Wrestling fans all over the world are filled with a lot of excitement ever since Vince McMahon's retirement and Stephanie McMahon and Nick Khan taking up the position of co-CEOs. Triple H, on the other hand, is now the new head of creative and EVP of talent relations. In an interview with ESPN, The Undertaker commented on the game's new role in the company. He had nothing but praise for his former opponent and shared that Levesque was brilliant. I mean, Triple H is brilliant. He really is. I don't think he gets enough credit for his wrestling acumen. I think he'll be a huge asset to the development of a lot of guys. I think it's a step in the right direction. This year's SummerSlam marked the first premium live event under Triple H's regime, and the show has since received heaps of praise from legends and fans alike. The Deadman and the King of Kings are two of the most well-known veterans in the sport. The two also shared a long history after many matches together when they were still active competitors. In the same interview, the WWE Hall of Famer talked more about what kind of person Triple H was outside the ring. Taker said that Levesque would let someone know if they were right or wrong. And he's a no guy too. He's going to let you know what you're doing that's right and what you're doing that's wrong. I think it's going to be a step in the right direction with Hunter. Given his past experience with the early days of NXT and his time as a wrestler, it's safe to say that Triple H is knowledgeable enough to know what's best for business. Finn Balor, who is a former two-time NXT champion and has competed in high-profile matches since his return to NXT back in 2019. Before that, Balor was working in the main roster for a few years where he was not utilized well. At WWE Extreme Rules 2021, Finn Balor faced off against Roman Reigns for the WWE Universal Championship. Fans in the arena thought Balor would emerge victorious, however, Balor lost the match after the top rope snapped while he was standing on the turnbuckle, which led to Reigns hitting a spear and picking up the win. The ending really ticked off fans. While speaking to WWE L Brunch, Balor was asked about facing Reigns again. Balor made it clear he has unfinished business with Reigns. Me and Roman Reigns have a lot of unfinished business. There was a little bit of a questionable finish to our last match at Extreme Rules when the top rope mysteriously broke in our championship match, so I feel there's a rematch due with myself and Roman. Hopefully we'll get to that soon after Clash at the Castle. Balor is currently feuding with Edge and the Mysterios. We will have to wait and see whether he will face Reigns again in the future or not. What's your take? Do you want to see Balor vs. Reigns again? Sound off in the comments below. And we're ending today with Triple H, who has taken over as WWE's head of creative following the retirement of Vince McMahon. Between the recent returns and focus on different superstars, fans seem to be in agreement that the game is doing great in the role, but WWE isn't so sure. In the company's latest SEC filings, WWE stated that McMahon's retirement could have a negative effect on the company's ability to make characters and new storylines. It's certainly an interesting thing for WWE to say in their filing, as it implies that the company does not have faith in Triple H to be head of creative, despite putting him in the role. It's also worth mentioning that Triple H has years in a creative role as he worked as head of NXT, and even before then had established himself as an important and useful presence backstage. One thing for sure is that things aren't the same without Vince McMahon running WWE, but contrary to what the company seems to think, many fans believe that's a good thing. Well guys, that's our news for today, please share your comments below! Also hit the like button, subscribe to our channel, and hit the bell icon to receive all notifications! And as always, 
Thanks for watching.